Hello, I am Rahish. Today I am discussing about the Golden Telescope. Since the ancient times, humans had wondered about our universe, starting by watching the sky by only eyes and then by telescopes. On 22nd December 2021, a new space telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope, is scheduled for launch on board the Ariane 5 launch vehicle from Kourou in French Guyana. JWST is a collaboration between NASA, the European Space Agency ESA and the Canadian Space Agency CSA. Since early to mid-1990s, the Hubble Space Telescope has been the primary space telescope for NASA and now JWST is expected to replace Hubble. The launch mass of the JWST is nearly 6,500 kilograms. The primary mirror of JWST is 6.5 meters in diameter and it has a collecting area of 25.4 square meters and it is dedicated for the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Hubble was able to detect near-infrared, visible light and ultraviolet, while JWST can only detect light in the orange to infrared spectrum. Hubble's primary mirror was 2.4 meters in diameter and had a collecting area of nearly 4.5 meters, nearly five times less than JWST. But Hubble weighed more than JWST, nearly 11,000 kilograms. JWST is a type of coarse telescope. A coarse telescope has three mirrors due to which many optical problems are solved. This design in particular has a wide field of view. On the other hand, Hubble was a version of the Cassegrain telescope, which has two mirrors. Ariane 5's payload fairing is only 5.4 meters in diameter and the primary mirror of JWST is 6.5 meters in diameter. Hence, the rocket cannot accommodate the telescope's primary mirror in a single piece. Thus, the entire telescope is designed to be folded and deployed in space after launch. The primary mirror itself is made up of 18 hexagonal gold-plated beryllium mirrors. It will have a diameter of 6.5 meters once deployed in space. It has gold mirrors because gold reflects 99% of the infrared light. Hence, it is much more efficient. More than that, gold is much more stable in space environment compared to other metals. The optical elements of the telescope are very fragile. Hence, the trajectory of the telescope from launch till it reaches L2 is designed in a way that the optics never face the sun. Even during launch, a series of burns are planned to make sure that the telescope's optics are shielded from the sun. As we have discussed, JWST is dedicated for the infrared astronomy. For this, the telescope must be kept at a low temperature. Because of this reason, JWST will be stationed at the Earth's L2 Lagrange point. At the Lagrange point, the gravity of the Earth and Sun balances each other. Hence, a spacecraft can orbit that point in space. Earth has five Lagrange points and L2 is behind the Earth. Hence, JWST can observe its targets without interference from Earth, Moon or Sun. JWST also has a large sun shield to shield the main telescope from the light and heat of the sun. This tennis court size sun shield is also designed to be folded and deployed after launch. It has five layers. We can see that in these images. Each layer is silicon and aluminum coated kapton. That purple color in some areas is due to silicon in the material. It also has a momentum trim tab, which aids in balancing the solar pressure. This will reduce the fuel consumption by the telescope. And since JWST has a limited amount of fuel, it is very essential. This sun shield, along with its L2 position, will keep the temperature of the main telescope at 50 Kelvin. That is minus 223 degrees centigrade. After launch, it will take nearly a month to fully deploy its sun shield and the telescope. Then it will take around six months to calibrate, test and verify everything for science observations. It is expected to work for five years. However, its goal is to function for 10 years. All the science instruments are placed on the back side of the primary telescope. It has four scientific payloads. They are near infrared camera, NIR cam, 
near-infrared spectrograph, NIR spec, mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, and the near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph, NIRISS. NIR CAM is an infrared imager and it will cover spectral range from visible to near-infrared part of the spectrum. It has 10 sensors of 4 megapixels each. It will also work as the wavefront sensor of the telescope. NIR spec will have the same spectral range as NIR CAM. It has two sensors of 4 megapixels each. It is built by the ESA. MIRI has the spectral range from mid to long infrared. It has a mid infrared camera and an imaging spectrometer. This instrument must be kept at a temperature of 6 Kelvin. For this, a helium gas mechanical cooler has been added on the sun-facing side of the telescope. This is a collaboration between NASA and some other European countries. NIRISS and the fine guidance sensor FGS are mounted together, hence they can be considered a single unit, but both of them have different work. FGS will be used to control telescope's orientation and image stabilization by driving the steering mirror, while NIRISS is the imaging instrument. Both of these are being provided by the CSA. The spacecraft has a pointing precision of one arc second. It has gyroscopes and star tracker to determine its orientation and any change in that. To correct any change, it has reaction wheels and thrusters. The spacecraft has a pair of 10 thrusters. Each pair has one primary thruster and one redundant thruster as a backup. It uses hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide as fuel and oxidizer respectively. It has enough propellant for 10 years. The spacecraft need this propellant for station keeping since L2 is not entirely stable. All the thrusters are mounted in a way that they don't damage the main telescope. NASA is trying to develop a replacement for Hubble since late 1980s, even before the launch of the Hubble. And in 1996, JWST emerged as the next generation space telescope, NGST, and in 2002, it became the JWST. It was originally slated for launch in 2007 with a total budget of $500 million, but it has been delayed many times and now its total budget is nearly $10 billion. This year, JWST's launch was actually scheduled for October, but there were some problems with Ariane 5's payload fairings. Then it was scheduled for 18 December, but again, there were some problems when the telescope was being integrated with the rocket. Now, finally, it is launching on 22nd December. These delays were just last in a series of delays, which happened for many reasons. It will be much more capable than Hubble, but Hubble has continued for 31 years now. And Hubble had five servicing missions by the space shuttle. And Hubble continued its service because of those missions. But now the space shuttle is no longer flying and JWST's L2 position would simply make any servicing mission near impossible and it is not designed for any servicing missions either. Hence once launched JWST will likely not have any servicing missions and it is also much more complex and expensive than Hubble. JWST is another result of mankind's curiosity and the desire to extend our knowledge. This will be humanity's another attempt to unravel the secrets of the cosmos. Thanks for watching my video.